Welcome to Grace United Methodist Church. We're going online because of the uh, crisis in the United States as we deal with the coronavirus. Uh, it might be a little rusty. We haven't done this before, but throughout this time, we will have worship on Sundays that you can connect to and uh, on Facebook and YouTube, and you will be notified on how to do this through regular messages. Let us worship our God together. Good morning, everyone. So glad you could join us. Today, you can see we have a boat with us today. And that reminds us that, you know, we're getting to the season where there's going to be some thunderstorms, and they come up quickly, and sometimes we need to make sure we check the weather before we go out because, you know, we won't want to be caught off guard. Well, one day, Jesus and some of his disciples were out on the lake. Suddenly, without warning, a storm came up. The wind blew so hard and the waves were so high, the water was coming into the boat and the boat was about to be turned over. While the winds and waves tossed the little boat, Jesus slept peacefully at one end of the boat. Some of the disciples became upset that Jesus was sleeping. They went and woke Jesus and asked him, Master, don't you even care that we're about to drown? Jesus got up and spoke to the winds and the waves. Peace. Peace. Be still. As soon as he spoke, the wind stopped blowing and the seas became calm. Jesus' disciples were amazed. They said, who is this? That even the winds and the waves obey him. Well, we all know who Jesus is, don't we? And we know that Jesus can calm storms today. Sometimes there are sudden storms in our life. Like right now, Mrs. Hendrickson and I can't see you guys. You guys can't go to church, we can't go to school, we can't even play with our friends. During these times, Jesus can calm the storms of doubt and fear in our life. He doesn't always take away all of our problems, but if we trust in him, he will give us peace in our hearts, even in the middle of a storm. What's something that we can do to put our trust in Jesus? Well, Mrs. Hendrickson and all the kids, we give our concerns and our worries to him. To our parents, we let, us know, let them know if you have concerns, talk. Don't be afraid to express how you're feeling and pray. Pray that we all stay safe, that we all stay healthy, and that we can all be together again soon. So will you pray with me and everyone can join in? Heavenly Father, Heavenly, Heavenly, Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those times when you calm the storms. We thank, we thank you for those times when you calm the storms. We also thank you. We also thank you for the times when you give us peace. For the times when you give us peace, even though we are in the middle of a storm. Even though we are in the middle of a storm. We ask you to watch over us. We ask you to watch over us and keep us safe. And keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When I was in uh, junior high, I participated in a Boy Scout work camp where another Boy Scout beside me was using a rototiller and he inadvertently hit a nest of ground hornets. Suddenly, we found ourselves in a tornado of stinging insects. And because I was wearing shorts and no shirt, I was stung everywhere. Uh, th that massive stinging experience left me a bit paranoid of wasps and bees and hornets for quite some time. Late summer and early autumn were always the worst because the yellow jackets got a bit testy and invaded family picnics. And I found myself on more than one occasion not just running a short distance away, but running 50, 60 feet to show that I was perhaps a slight bit paranoid about the whole thing. But by the time I got into college, my fears subsided somewhat. I could calmly walk away from the picnic table by then and let the Yellow Jackets have my lunch. Even if one wanted to buzz around my face, I didn't panic knowing that they're just smelling my breath to see if I had committed the faux pas of putting ketchup on a hot dog. But the one fear that I never overcame 
was when I could hear a buzzing insect flying around me, but couldn't see where it was. My anxiety level would constantly increase the longer that went on. In this unprecedented situation in which we find ourselves as we deal with the coronavirus pandemic, I find that I feel the same type of anxiety. I hear the buzz. I feel like I'm in danger of getting stung by something, but I can't see a thing. I have not seen anyone who looks sick, but find myself opening public doors with a napkin in my hand, and though my flesh touched nothing, I might use a hand sanitizer afterward anyway, just in case. Between the news and my own imagination, the anxiety level increases. I bet many of you are feeling the same way. And even those who don't have a lot of anxiety are at least feeling confined and inconvenienced and worried about loved ones. For the public safety, Grace Church has canceled all in-person gatherings for the next four weeks. One of the last in-person gatherings that took place here was the disciple class I was teaching, and we were studying the book of Philippians. It has a message we all need to hear today, the fourth chapter, verses 5 to 9. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition and with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. I've discovered that if I think of good and pleasant things, godly things, things related to the love of Jesus Christ, I can find a sense of peace that passes all understanding, a peace not affected by the ups and downs of life in this world. I've also found that if I dedicate myself to working for the common good, my mind is occupied in such a way that my fear subsides. Whatever's true or noble or right or pure, lovely, admirable, excellent or praiseworthy, think of these things and, and put them into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. I think I might reread Philippians 4 every day throughout this national crisis. For a couple of years after college and before I went to seminary, I worked in management in the international transportation industry. And next to my office was a, a very large repair facility for 18-wheelers, an immense building with an arched metal roof. And during a terrible windstorm, a ventilation unit on that roof was blown off, and then the wind caught the hole and stripped the whole metal roof off one side of the building. Uh, this happened in the mid-1970s, not that long after the end of the Vietnam War. Many of the diesel mechanics were Vietnam veterans, uh, and the horrendous explosive sound of that roof coming off sent one of the vets into a post-traumatic stress event. He suddenly believed that he was back in Nam and was under attack. His fellow veterans approached him and attempted to calm him down, bring him back to reality, to this time and place. He grabbed a large frame bolt wrench and began to swing it wildly with a force that could easily have crushed anyone's skull. One of the larger veterans jumped the young man from behind, binding his arms in a bear hug, and the others quickly disarmed him. And with this, the young mechanic dropped to the floor, rolled into a natal position, and let loose with the most blood-curdling shriek I have ever heard. The scream had a chilling effect on all who were present, but the effects on those Vietnam veterans uh, were beyond description. 
nonetheless, as upset as they all were, as tearful as they all were, they put their arms around their comrade, rocked him like a mother might rock a child who has awakened from a nightmare and would not let him go until he felt safe and cared for and among friends. Several of these men were Christians, including both the man who widely swung the frame bolt wrench as if his co-workers were the enemy, and the man who disarmed him, cried with him in his arms, and calmed him. Before this event took place, they seemed like a, a happy-go-lucky bunch, unaffected by Vietnam. Uh, you wouldn't even know they were veterans. A week after the event, they were the same jovial bunch, except for one difference. They had bonded together, closer than brothers. It was more than just friendship and camaraderie. Somehow the incident itself had unified their spirits, making them one, not just by virtue of shared experience in the military, but also shared experience as Christians. One might look at the event and only think that they had witnessed a living hell but that's not how they defined it. The veterans saw people comforting each other in a time of need, and the comfort was stronger than the pain. The holding in each other's arms meant more than the crying on the floor. The situation became an opportunity for building up, and thus, in hindsight, was not perceived by them as a breakdown, and they saw it as an opportunity to turn it over to the Lord, collectively, together. Many of us might have seen it as a living hell. They looked at the event, the bonds of love and friendship they shared, and they claimed that they had witnessed the grace of God, bringing them all together. It's very uniquely Christian to have situations like that. It's much like the cross which at the same time is a symbol of crucifixion as well as a symbol of life eternal. Well, why do I think of this story at this time? Well, it's simple, really. The coronavirus and its fact, effects can be looked upon as a living nightmare, but it might also be looked upon as an opportunity to bring us all together. Uh, rather than concentrating on images of those who might suffer, let us concentrate on and be determined to be a part of the willingness to help, to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ at this time. As St. Paul said, let your gentleness be evident to all. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, present your request to God, whatever's true noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy. Think about those things and put them into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. We may be social distancing, but we're also going to learn that we are all in this together, and that cooperation is the only way to address a problem of this magnitude. Maybe that will teach us as individuals ways to address problems in our families, schools, workplaces. Maybe that will teach us as a nation that despite all of the differences in our society, we can work together for the common good. And maybe that will teach us as a planet as we address everything from pandemics to the care of the environment that we must work together lest we fall together. My prayer is that God will touch our hearts through this event in such a way that we will be made aware that humanity is but one family. That is one of the true, noble, pure, lovely, admirable things I will be thinking about as we work to defeat this virus. May the peace of Christ be with you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor David, for sharing those, those words of encouragement. And, and one thing that, that Pastor David 
shared that really touched me was when he said a, that we can look for the grace through the situation. Look for the grace of God through the situation. And, and as you're watching this, you might be watching it on YouTube or you might be watching it on Facebook. Maybe you, maybe you pulled it up on the church's webpage. But I'd like to encourage you to do something. How is God's grace working through your life? Think about that. And then share, whether it be on YouTube or Facebook or, or send us an email. How is God's grace working through your situation today? And together, we can celebrate. But maybe you need some prayers. Maybe there's specific concerns that you have. Share those as well. We are the body of Christ. We want to support each other. We want to be the church. As we continue in worship, I'd like you to join me in a prayer for a pandemic shared with me by a pastor friend. It's written by Cameron Belm. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health or making their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools close remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel our trips Remember those that have no safe place to go. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for a quarantine at home remember those who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us choose love. During this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us yet find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. Lord, we pray that together we are, can be, the church. We pray all these things, Lord Jesus, in your name as we join together in sharing the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and, and the, the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Pastor Dave has some announcements for us, and then we're going to close with a very important song. We are the church. Normally, on a Sunday morning, I get to talk about all the uh, exciting things that are going to happen during the week for children's or family programming or in terms of mission outreach. The building's closed for four weeks. Uh, Carrie and I did not have any seminary classes on what to do during a pandemic, but the leadership of the church is in communication, each with one another, and so is the staff, and in the weeks ahead, we will be finding ways to engage and still be the church, even though the building is closed. Uh, we want you to check the webpage, and to make sure you check your email if you're a member, because we will email instructions on a periodic basis of how you can connect, what types of ministries we are having to help elderly members or members with pre-existing medical conditions that might need help, and ways that we as a community of faith can engage with and support ministries in this community that are trying to address this national problem. Let's end with a verse of a song that pretty much defines where we are today. 
We'll be singing the refrain, the first verse, and the refrain again. You can Google it on your phone, or if you happen to have a hymnal, it is 558. We are the church. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. The church is not a building, the church is not a steeple, the church is not a resting place, the church is a people. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, Yes, we're the church together. The love of God, the peace of Christ, and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit be with all of you during this time. Stay well. Amen.